Hey, Kaposi Gloves here, and today we are going to be talking about true peak metering. True peak metering is really important because there's something called sample peak metering, which is what we talked about earlier. We know we want to mix to negative six, and when you master, you're going to be shoving it back up to zero, right? You're going to be getting that RMS value up there, and you're going to you're going to be trying to make it just as loud as possible. But what happens is sample peak metering may actually be softer than what's actually going on when it comes through your analog converter or your digital to analog converter. So let's just say that we've got our true peak metering. It looks at the level of the samples and then it spits out the value and that's what comes across as your peak. But, and we could have an issue. What if we have two samples that are really close to the maximum value? Um, well, what happens is when it gets converted over here, the signal that goes through those sample points may actually go above what the sample points are saying. And that's called intersample peaking. Now, I believe it can go above as far as three decibels. I might be wrong, but that was the number that I was reading somewhere. It could go quite a ways across this line, this intersample peak. And that means that if you have your stuff going to zero dB and you're using sample peak metering, if you were to send it through here, you'd actually be clipping, which is not cool. So what you could do uh, to fix this is you use what's called true peak metering. And here I have a plugin and it supports true peak metering. It does all, actually a whole load of other things, but it also does true peak metering. And it's a free plugin. It's sp specifically why I picked this one. So this is really cool because now instead of metering it as if it's looking at the sample peaks, it's looking at it as if it was being converted. This allows us to avoid any coloration that we don't necessarily want. This plugin was recently developed. I actually found out about it from FL Studio because apparently, I'm, I'm sorry if I say your name wrong, Yulian works for them or is a developer for them or something, something cool, okay? And uh, this plugin is in the KVR developer competition. So you can actually go on there and vote for it, which I recommend you do because this is a pretty dope a pretty dope, a pretty dope plugin for, I was pretty surprised that like this thing is freaking cool. So it includes the loudness standards. We're not going to get into loudness standards. It, if you're into broadcasting, then you'll know about these things because they're the law, but it's actually got the loudness standards in there if you want to use it for that. So it's really great for meeting and comes with a histogram, it tells you a bunch of cool stuff. But for you guys that are going to be just doing mixing, you just want to be aware of this true peak thing. A lot of plugins metering will allow you to switch to true peak. Like all the isotope stuff, if it has a meter on it, it will usually come with a setting that allows you to go to true peak. Trash 2 does. And so Trash 2 does just as one of the example of the isotope plugs. But a lot of plugins do that these days. I believe Melda Audio plugins, There's they have a free suite of plugins. I believe they also support true peak on their plugins, but I have not gone and checked. But basically, when you're metering, you may consider having this up instead of just a regular peak meter. I use the Fruity DB meter sometimes, just out of convenience. But it's really good to have something like this. And maybe they'll add additional sp specific options. Because there's actually a whole load of additional options. If you go into like Pro Tools, you have all sorts of metering options for ways to look at your meters to give you different meaningful values. So you want to make sure that you just have something that has true peak metering just so that you're aware that no additional coloration is going on if you're going to be mixing to zero dB. So you're basically going to be mixing as if you were mastering, which you generally aren't going to do. You're generally going to have a separate stage in which you do, in which you do your mix down and then do your master because you're usually mastering to make it sound like as loud as possible oftentimes. And so here though, I use the DB, you've seen me use the fruity DB meter. You can get totally fine results doing this method as well. I'm just making you aware of this. You're probably going to want to check your stuff. Like I usually don't leave my stuff just in this meter. I'll check this meter as well. Why do I like this meter? Well, it's tiny and I've used it a bunch. So it's, it's mostly a habit than anything, but it's right there versus this thing. It's kind of big and I, I'm not aware of a way to get rid of the histogram. If I could just make this just the meter, that'd be really cool. And I believe this is the first version. So maybe it'll be added on in the future that you can uh, optionally show the histogram. So yeah, if you have any questions, let me know. Go ahead, add your advice or whatever you want to say in the comments. What'd you eat for breakfast? You know, those kinds of things and have a blessed day.